All right, guys, this is Warshack, and today we're going to start getting into what you need to do to start getting ready to pin. Uh, one thing that I learned a long time ago, whenever you get ready to start doing this after you've washed your models, you've cleaned them up, make a photocopy of your instructions. And the reason I tell you this is because whenever you're doing this and you're messing with resins and epoxies and everything else, you can spill it on your instructions. When I got my Warlord in, I had my instructions laid out. I was at a different, I had recently bought this house, so I was at a different desk and I had a much larger desk and I had my instructions laid out. And I also had two bottles of epoxy resin. Well, when I was mixing the resins, somebody came into my little hobby room and uh, called my name and it, it spooked me. So I turned real quick, and when I did, I knocked over the catalyst onto the instructions. Now, the catalyst for that stuff, once you spill it on something, it's near impossible to get it off. A hard surface you can, but paper, nope, it'll never happen. So always make yourself a photocopy of your instructions. And there's another reason why you want to do this, and that's so you can draw on it and you're not really worried about it. So, what we're still looking at is the, Nec the Necron uh, Seraptic Heavy Construct. Now, what you can do with your instructions. By this time, you should have an idea of how you want your model positioned before you get started. Um, with this particular model, when I do my scenic base, I'm going to have this arm going into the head of a Reaver, Chaos Reaver Titan. So this arm will be positioned more up, like so, going into the head here. Okay, one thing I've done with doing that is I've taken away a little bit of the contact points from the model. And your contact points are the this, this small little feet here, 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 and of course these heavy claws. In doing that, I'm going to have to make sure this particular arm is planted in a way that it will hold most of the weight. I want, There was something in this I wanted to show you guys when we're talking about pinning and contact points. Now, that was the first page. Here's your second page. With You should have already gone through this checklist and checked off to make sure you got everything. Uh, preparing the model for assembly. I mean, even here they tell you wash each part thoroughly. Now, there's something now that I've mentioned that I did want to show you guys, because even somebody that is seasoned, that's have a lot of has a lot of experience doing this, you will run into problems. Now, this is the large forearm for that particular model. If you get it. It, my focus holds. If you get it close enough, let's see. And I don't block the line. There you can see it. This side's dull. This side, if you can look, you'll see that right there. That is not just light reflecting, reflecting off of the part. That is mold release that I missed when I was washing this model. Now, I'll have to rewash this part and make sure it's correct. But that's a good way to see if you've properly washed your models. Now, your resin will have a slight shine to it either way you go. But if you get a part, a part that is, you really can't miss it. That is, a, it just has a glow to it compared to the other parts of the resin. That means you've missed something. And you really honestly, unless it's a place that you're not going to see, you need to wash it because in time, and that's what I do here, is build models for lasting a long while. In time, that resin will cause your paint to bubble and come off. Now, if you spent 50 hours building this model and six months from now you walk by it and there's paint coming off of it, that's not a good feeling. But just keep that in mind. You know, kind of turn your parts over. You want to reinspect them after you've washed them. Now, okay, we've done that. 
we now have an idea of how we kind of want to build our model. This is again more components, kind of more or less a, a blueprint diagram of how it's supposed to go together. Now we're going to get over here to the instructions. Now, how I'm going to pin this, something else I want to point out to you, uh, I had mentioned last time that, you know, when you get a model from Forge World, it's not going to be exactly perfect. This red stuff right here, oh, it's supposed to be red in the original instructions. But this area here, 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 and all through here, what that is, is they're already telling you there's flashing on that model. You're going to have to trim that out. I mean, if you've got it in your mind that when you get the Forge World model, it's just immediately throw it together. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. It's not how it works. But in this model, going through your instructions, you kind of get a chance to look at it before you assemble it. And you say, okay, I want to pin this model so I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to be placing pins in here. So these two parts... Are connected with metal and the reason I'm going to do that is because once you get lower down in the instructions and onto the other sheet you'll see that this is a load-bearing structure and you want to make sure it's as strong as possible I will also pin these will be pinned the best I can this you can't pin that's just it's just too small and the same with that but these two here, you can pin, and, and my eyes should be pinned. These pieces here will also be, the spinal supports will also be pinned. And all those spots. I'm going to do my assembly a little differently than what they show you. And sometimes you have to do that with four tour models. The assembly they show you sometimes does not quite work, and you have to deviate from it. A small amount. Now, when we get to this part, I've already checked this neck, and honestly, you can get away with not pinning this part. Again, here's more flashing. You're going to have to trim up all through here. You can kind of get away with it, but I will be pinning it. Now, there's a major point here that with this model... I don't know if it's a design flaw or maybe something nobody thought about. But this part right here, the hip assembly and your pelvic armor plating, those are your only contact points from the main body of the model to the leg supports. Now, I've got this piece laid out right here. Let's see, where did I stick it at? Right here. That's your pelvic armor plating. This point right here, this circle, that is your connection point from the main body to the legs. Now, there's two different ways you can do this. You could cut this out place a needle or a magnet in there and you'd have to do a mounting for the inside of the body also and you could magnetize the top part which if you are a player that's going from tournament or game to game to game I would have I would suggest that um, if you're not and you're doing it for a scenic basis or maybe just a few friends come over to your house and play you're not gonna be traveling with it this component needs to need has to be pinned it's just too much of a weak point to ignore and it's a, a major problem here it can be fixed one of the problems that you're going to run into is the fact that this model is actually hollow normally how i would do this if this was a solid piece it wouldn't be a problem you just would you would just put a pin in this Stick it on with, of course, with the proper part in there. Epoxy it, and you're good. But being this model is hollow, it'll have to be done slightly differently. Now, while we're talking about the, this hip assembly, 
it's another contact point of failure. Now, this is one of the hip joint pieces. As you can see, this little lip right here is the only thing holding your legs to the hip joint. There's nothing else. Nothing. There's no connecting piece from here to here or anything like that. So you have four of these. Again, this is a nut, and if you look, your forge oil parts are not going to exactly fit. They never do. They never will. It's just the nature of the beast. So you've already got wiggle room in here. Again, it's a point of failure for this model. So what you're going to end up having to do, and when I get to the actual pinning and assembly, you'll see that I do this differently. Um... My models, I paint every little bit of it. I put them, I will make, put a small hole in all of them. With these particular models, some of the holes I'll use will be pinning holes. But I put them up on toothpicks or skewers, depending on the size of the part. And I primed them on the skewers. Now, some people are in a rush, they want to go ahead and get playing with it. Me, I've paid three or $400 for this model, I want to paint every bit of it. That's just what I want to do. Now, if you're one of these people, you're in a rush to play, and you paint it a different way, and assemble it a different way, hey, that's, you do what you want to do. It's your model. You spend it, do it how you want to. You spend your money how you want. I'm just showing you a way to take long-term care of these models, and that's something a lot of people kind of skip over, or they don't realize that, you know, you may have this model for if you're a power gamer, you might have it long enough to play two or three games, and as soon as the new meta comes out, you sell it. It's not your problem. Or you might be like myself, where I'm a collector, and I, once I put something together, it'll be on display for 10 or 15 years. It's, I've got a shelf set up. At some point in time, I'll show you guys. We recently moved, so I don't have everything where it needs to be. But these parts are going to have to be pinned. And I'll show you how to go through and pin this part. But right now, we're just in the planning stages, figuring out exactly what we're going to need, the type of pins we're going to need. But again, this is a major, major failure point in this model. There's another part that I don't know why they did it this way. I, 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 I don't quite understand it myself. Here it is. is. This little X piece. It actually sits on top of your hip joint. And if you see, there's a tiny little gap in this. I mean, this gap is probably one millimeter at best. Well, resin will fail. So you've got this one little millimeter gap, and the only thing you've got connecting it is these four little feet. Now keep in mind, this part is holding the weight for your main body. It just, I don't know why they did that. But we'll also be pinning that. Because these parts will sit like this, and then your main connection will sit here. That is your legs to body connection. Again, no idea why they did it like this. This could have been done a lot better, a lot differently. This right here is, it's just begging to fail. So we'll be pinning it, and more than likely, we'll pin it straight through. Not this, but you'll get the idea. We'll pin this straight through. It won't come out the bottom here. It'll probably be about yay deep. And that will be to support that part and also to support the main body weight. Now, when you get down to your scenic bases and supporting the actual legs, that can be done a lot of different ways. It can be done with a ruined tank, uh, plain old ruins and rubble, uh, a heel, I've seen it done that way. 
Um, there's some people I have seen them. Uh, I don't necessarily like this myself, but I have seen it done. They'll take a threaded steel rod, paint it black, and just have that mounting. Now, really, you can't see it, but it's something I, I just don't care for. Okay, so we've looked at the hip joints. Now, some of this stuff just doesn't need to be pinned. You'll run into that. Uh, the thermal vent platings. They just, they don't need pinning. They're not, they don't support any weight. Uh, again, I'll paint most of this before I even start assembling. I will go ahead and start doing the pinning work. As in, some of the, the sub-assembly will be done. Other parts will already be pre-drilled for the pin holes. I'll use those holes to hold up the parts so I can prime and paint them. Now, one thing I do disagree with them on is it says right the weapon mount, mountings here. It says you don't glue them, so they'll be movable. The problem with this is it's a twofold problem. If you paint this and you're constantly moving the arms around, it's going to rub the paint off. It's just that plain and simple. It will rub the paint off. That's just the way it goes. The other thing I don't like about it is without pinning this, all the weight from that weapon. And again, guys, the, the weight I'm talking about, most some people might say, well, this doesn't weigh much. Why would it bother it? You've got to think about your five enemies. Time and gravity is a big one here. That little bit of weight on this arm. Let's see. Multiplied by years. And again, depending on where you live, the, the heat, the humidity, even your type of house. Uh, if you live in a brick house or uh, an apartment complex or maybe you live in a mobile home. And when I say mobile home, because I know people all over the world, I'm in a, a trailer. Uh, that's probably not even going to describe it for you. Uh, here in, in North America, we have mod. some people will call them modular homes. Uh, here in the South, we just call them mobile homes. And it's not a camper on wheels. It's an actual mobile home. Those things are incredibly hot and next to impossible to cool. But with this mount, again, you're going to be supporting that weight. And hopefully for years. You know, hopefully you're going to enjoy your models. You're going to keep them. And as you can see, I missed a little pieces right here. I've got to trim up. It's, it's easy to do. But you're going to have this setting here for years. And so you've got this weight and this one arm holding it. And you can see this is it's a, a large amount of weight. For this, these are your structural failure points. Where if it's going to bend, it's going to bend here in the thinnest, weakest part. Again, if you're traveling a lot, if you're, you know, going to tournaments, this is where you're going to see your failure. There, and if you're just gluing it here. That's the reason I never glue things. I always, unless it's a very small part, I'll glue it. But these will also be pinned. This will also be pinned in place. I'm not worried about magnetizing this. I actually have a second heavy construct with the other weapon that I'm going to be doing separately. So, to me, I'm not going to bother about magnetizing it. So that's another structural weakness that we're going to have to take care of. These mountings will actually help us in a way because what we're going to do is we're going to run the pins through. They're on the same side. So when we get ready to pin this, we'll be... Let's see if I can find something. We'll be running straight through. Going straight through, connecting those two arms together, they're going to be epoxy. Okay, so we've got that. We know what we're going to do there. Now we're going on up here 
these are the front arm mounts. Again, they come back and connect back to these weapons. This is another massive failure point to me. I, I don't know why it was done this way. They'll have to be pinned through the body together. And also, I will be pinning mine to the ball joint. All four of these arms will be pinned in place. So you'll not have any movement with the weapon support. These right here are what holds your massive front arm claws. They're the same size as the ball joint holders. So this arm will support the legs and the upper legs. That's a, in ratio terms, that's a lot of weight on this one part, especially just using glue. We're going to be pinning that here. Yeah, as soon as we pin rods there, also in here, and here. Again, I want this model, once I get done with it, I want to be able to look at it for years and enjoy it. And not worry about it coming apart. Because again, heat, time, gravity, all that will affect your even epoxy. It will still affect the epoxy. Uh, we live in an area, I live in a, a brick house now, but we live in an area where we have hurricanes, floods, things like that. And I have seen times that we've lost power for a week or two. Well, if you're here in the south and you lose power for a week or two, our temperature can vary. And I, when I say vary, I mean vary. There's times of the year it can be 15 degrees one day. And the next day it can be 100 we have wild temperature variations. And most of the time when a hurricane comes through, it'll cool down. And then a day or two after, it'll get 80, 90, 100 degrees. Well, if you've got this model in your home and your power goes out, no air conditioning, and it's not pinned and it hits 100 degrees, you're going to have some problems. Especially if it's going to stay 100 degrees for a few days. The spinal plating, this I will also pin probably in th three or four places. Here, here, here. Because these spinal plates hold three of these plates. This is another point I don't really particularly like, but we'll work on that a little bit later. The real shoulder plates. I will also pin those more than likely all the way through. Now, with that, you know, some people say, well, you might be able to see that. You, you won't ever see it once it's pinned because that pin will run underneath the spinal column or right through the bottom part of it. This is where your plating goes. Probably got the wrong one. So as you can see, when you got your plating up here, that's about where it sits. Like I said, I don't have it exactly right. There you go. When you put these plates on, these plates have these little grooves to fit in. Now, as I said, I'll be pinning it all the way through because I just I just want to be on the safe side. More than likely, my pin will be in this little dot, bolt, whatever you want to call it. I'll drill it from this side and run the pin all the way through to the other side and connect them both. And I, well, I'll be doing that on camera. Your ventral plate arming armor, it also needs to be pin that's your contact point and I just cannot stress how time and gravity and temperature will affect your model even epoxy pinning it is not a foolproof way of making sure it doesn't come apart on you but it sure helps your failure rate would go down to
probably one or two percent. It'd have to be something crack catastrophic. I mean, it'd have to be knocked off a shelf or something like that. When it comes down to the forearm assembly, now again, you'll see these areas right here indicating there's flashing that has to be cut out. Flashing, you have to be extremely careful in here. These are small and particularly thin. And when you start getting into the very nooks and crannies with a sharp knife, it is very, very easy to just snip it. So you have to take your time, be easy about what you're doing, and get in there. And it's not that bad. And if you miss a little bit, hey, it's okay. It's no big deal. When it comes down to your forearms, one of these forearms I would really recommend needs to be in the downward position. Now, I know there's a lot of people they want to do these jumping off rock poses and three legs up in the air or something like that. You're just asking for your model to fail. It may look cool, but it's not going to last the test of time without doing extremely heavy amounts of pinning and a lot of green stuff. That That's just the way it's going to go. Uh, this one, I'll be running a pin probably into this section. It's a two-piece section. The four claws. I'll be running a pin, and as you can see, there's still some shine on this one where I missed some uh, mold release. But I'll be running pins through this section, through this section. Now there's a claw, a slotting claw that goes in here. It tells you not to glue it. But again, if you're moving this thing up and down, it's going to rub your paint off. Let's see here. It just will. It may be a cool feature. It may be something you go, wow, that's that's pretty neat. And it is neat. It's, to me, it just enables you to position it a little differently. But if you're constantly doing this, or somebody at your game the store, or you, if you, I don't know why you'd let them do it, is constantly doing this, you're going to rub your paint off. Not only on this part, because your hand oils will do that, but on this part. And... If you spend a lot of hours painting this, this is not something you want. So one of these claws, once this pin put together, I will also pin this part into place. Because it is a little floppy. I mean, it's, it's thin, it's floppy. Do not use this blade for connection point. It's just, it is too thin, guys. It is just too thin to carry that much weight. Again, you're going to have one of your claws with the blade retracted as a contact point. So you got to keep that in mind. So all this is going to be pinned. I will also pin the claw to this section. This section will be pinned from here into this section, and this arm will be pinned into the connector I showed you just a little while ago. Okay, so we've got to that point. And here's some more of the upper legs. Now, this is a good way of showing you. That small connection point I originally showed you. This one. That is holding the weight for all of this, your front claws, and your weapons. Yeah, you get the point. So it is holding all this, that connection point. That is just like, again, it's a recipe for failure. That's going to have to be fixed. And also, keep in mind, something else I had pointed out earlier. 
that little nub is also holding the weight for that entire body. Again, it's, it's asking to fail. The head is not that big of a deal. It's not very complex. It's not a complex piece. Uh, I'll run a pin into the head, in through the neck part, and into the lower jaw. Or neck plating, I'm sorry. And then the head will be pinned into the main body. Now, the head doesn't have to be pinned. It could be magnetized and coming on, on and off. If you wanted to, if you wanted to be able to turn the head a little bit slightly, you can. By the time we get done, this is going to be where we're at. But this is something you need to pre-plan your build. Make sure you got your materials. And your materials, again, depending on where you're at in the hobby. All you really need is these hand reels, a few bits of varying sizes. Again, you can go to Amazon, you can go to Harbor Freight, and you can buy cheap little drill bits that they're not worth anything on wood or metal or anything like that, but they do great with your resin, and if you snap one off, it's no big deal. They're $5 a pack. As far as your other tools, if you want to do heavier pinning, like with steel rods, you're going to have to have a hacksaw or a Dremel with a cutting blade on there. When you start getting the bigger models, heavier models, you're going to need more equipment. Now, none of us hobbyists started out with this big heavy equipment. None of us did. I don't care what the other YouTubers show you. It's something you build up over time. Keep your eyes out on Facebook Marketplace. Look for estate sales. A lot of times with the estate sales, and some people are going to go, well, that's kind of scummy. You'll have children or grandchildren selling their grandfather or great-grandfathers or father's belongings. They don't know what they have. Is it taking advantage of somebody? No. Because if I contact you and say, how much, how much do you want for that Dremel? And they go, what's a Dremel? And I send them a picture of it, and they, they say, well, I'll take five bucks for that. Well, that's what you said you wanted, so I don't have a problem with it. But that's how we get our stuff. It, it's over time. You'll start getting tools as you go. Keep your eyes out for clearance. Christmas clearance is a great place to find pins. The ornament hooks make wonderful pins for smaller things. I'll be using a lot of electric fence wire on this particular project just because I know it does fairly well. I know it'll hold. There'll be some parts I'll use finishing nails from Walmart. Again, you're going to need... Now, the cost of these clippers here, I don't know. Because, again, I had these, I've had these 25 years. And I'm pretty sure they don't make them as good as they used to. These were actually older than that. I got them from my stepfather. And, again, I've never sharpened these. Never had to. And I've cut 16-gauge uh, nails. I've cut wire nails. I've cut resin with them. I've cut electric wire with them. Uh, I mean, house wire, 14-2, 12-2, it'll cut just about anything. Uh, old fencing, like for cows and stuff like that, it'll cut right through it. Never sharpened it. You won't need a lot of major tools to start off with, but again, keep your eyes open. Look for estate sales. If you see a yard sale, stop. Sometimes you can find a small uh, drill press for... 20 25 dollars maybe uh, a sander for pretty cheap a lot of times you can find quality drill bits at these yard sales and on facebook marketplace you don't have to run out and buy stuff you don't have to run out and buy the newest and best things you can do a lot with what you have 
and do a lot with what you already have. These, these are good on this particular model, and I'll tell you why. You've got a lot of thin parts, and whenever you're getting ready to do a pin, and you're holding the part like I am right here, you're going to go in the middle of that, and you're going to start turning. Now, the great thing about this is with this thin part, you can actually feel the drill bit going through. If you start feeling pressure on this side or this side, you know you're too far to the right or to the left. And that's all you really have to do. Now, that hole, I could have gone a little lower. It's a little high, but again, it's fine. As long as you've not breached through the model, you don't really have much to worry about. Now, this particular one, I'll actually take this all the way up. Because I don't like this small area right here. To me, that's a massive failure point. So, we've gone over tools, pins we went over in another video, but I'll go over them again. You can use almost anything as a pin. Paper clips, which are a lot harder than what you think they are. Electric fence wire. Uh, fishing hooks do not make good pins. They are hardened steel. They're very hard to cut. And it's very easy to stick yourself with them. So I do not re recommend fishing hooks. The wire that's used for ornaments is very good. Electrical wire is another great place you can get pins. If you go to your local Lowe's, Walmart, wherever, you can get 12-2 or 14-2 copper wire for pretty cheap. You can buy, I think it's a 25-foot roll for about 30 bucks. A 25-foot roll of this will last you forever because you're, using, you're actually getting three wires at one time. All this gauge right here. And you'll use these to that particular arm, I don't think I made the hole big enough for this kind of wire. But once you put this wire in here, you're not going to be able to bend it that easily. This will support your mo this size model all day long. If you don't want to do that, like I said, you can use just regular electric fence wire. You can use you can even use toothpicks if you really want to. I, I don't suggest it because they will get wet and kind of warp. This is nowhere as strong as this. And they're actually just about the same size. The copper wire is just a hair bit thicker. Alrighty, guys. I think I've rambled on enough right now. But before I go... This is one of the legs. It's not quite assembled. And when we get ready to start pinning it, I'll kind of give you a preview of what I'm going to do. I will pin from inside this, and this is fine because I'm going to prime over this. That's another good technique. Your unprimed models, it's fine to draw them if you need to. To kind of give yourself some marks about what you want to do, how you want to do it. The pin for this particular spot here will actually be coming in from here. And now it doesn't want to write. This part of the leg will be pinned from here to here. Then more than likely, I will run a pin from this point all the way through it that pin will also go in to that section so it'll be locked in from this position and that position and that gives you a maximum amount of stability with this this wire this pin will stop will come out on this side I actually probably will make it a little bit shorter so when I get ready to pin this one, now if you're using thin enough electrical wire, you can actually push it through and keep one solid piece like a skeletal structure. 
and again it depends on your positioning if you're at a 45 degree a 90 degree angle then no it's going to be very difficult but if your leg has been at a 45 or somewhere around that number it's not so bad you can just kind of run that wire all the way through and out here and that would fit into your ball joint that wire will run into your leg holder and then on to here it is to your hip joint now holding it like this you can see why it gives me concern this piece gives me concern this has got to be pinned because these little legs is what's holding the weight Alrighty guys, on the next video, I'll actually start doing some work and less rambling. I just wanted to go over those things. Remember to keep your eyes out at yard sales, estate sales, thrift shops, anywhere you can look. Uh, something else that's become popular in my area is uh, stores that that sell, uh, do bins, bin sales where it's all Amazon returns. Uh, you can find... You can actually find Dremels in places like that. I bought an off-brand Dremel in there the other day for about ten bucks. Uh, but I got I took took it down in my tractor barn, and uh, yes, I do have a tractor, and that's where it stays at in my other shop. All right, guys. Well, thank you for your time. Looking, feel free to comment, not comment, like, don't like, hey, whatever you feel like doing. I hope you guys have a great day. Try to enjoy your hobby. Try not to be too concerned about what other people think about your hobby work. We all want praise. We all want to be accepted in our hobby group. But always remember, we're at different stages in our hobby. Be respectful to other people's their stage in their hobby. If you're around a bunch of people that want to take a microscope at your models and find problems with them, you're in the wrong group. If you're in a group of people and you bring this heavy Necron construct in and somebody talks about, well, it, it must be nice to have that kind of privilege, you're in the wrong group. Because buying something like this is not privilege. This is hard work. Again, I'm older. I am. My children are grown besides one I've got here at home. This is after the house is paid off, the car is paid off, all this other is paid off. And I mean, I'm talking about working 17, 18 hour days to do that. But if you're around people like that, you're just in the wrong group of people. They're not there for the hobby. And that's what you want. You want to be in a group of people for the hobby. Alrighty, guys, I'm done rambling this time. And I'll be, the next video will be actually starting to do the pinning work and going through the process. Just make sure you got your tools, your pins, uh, a marker or a pen. Don't be afraid to draw on these because once you're painted, once it's painted, you can't see it. And it will also kind of, when you've got all these parts, it'll kind of give you a little heads up and memory about what you're doing with your instructions. Go through your instructions, find your parts. And then figure out how you're going to pin it. The stance is also very dependent on how you're going to pin. And when you're looking at your instructions, one thing I did forget. It's a good thing to look at this page. Here's a very good view of that failure point. Right there. That is what's holding the weight of your model. As you can see... This model was designed for these front claws to be on the ground to actually support it. If you don't have one of these claws in the ground and you've got a position like that, it's going to fail right there. That weight is just going to snap it right there. Your stance is very important in this model. I don't have six fingers, so you're going to have to forgive me. If you want to have two claws up in the air, you can do that. They need to be heavily pinned, but you're also going to have to heavily pin your back legs. So let's get our supplies together. 
and I apologize for the quality of the video. I apologize for rambling. But that's what I do. I'm too old to be too concerned about it. So get your supplies together, your pens. Use your imagination. You probably got all kinds of things laying around your house you could use for pens. You, you, I don't care what anybody tells you. You don't have to run out and buy a bunch of stuff to do this. It's not rocket science. It's, science. it's just a little bit of pre-planning and getting your stuff together. Alrighty, guys. Thank you very much for your time. And as I promised, the next video will be less rambling and more putting together of this model.